Mark Escante reporting, reporting on the North Korean Peninsula. Trump lands down in Vietnam to shake hands with Kim Jong-un in North Korea to discuss demilitarization of their country, their country, North Korea. Meet on neutral soil in Vietnam. Vietnam, the country that the United States had a war with in the 60s, remember? All the hippies in Vietnam. Vietnam, 1969. Why are they going to Vietnam? It's neutral? I don't know. <laughs> but there they are, right? So they're in Vietnam. Let's, let's jump right in and see Trump. Oh, here's the big man. Damn. He's getting off his plane. It's so fucking exciting, man. It's like, it's like fucking, it's like wrestling, man. It's like wrestling. Oh, he's so amazing. Look at this fucking guy. Don't trip. Don't trip. Don't embarrass us. Look up. So, he's shitting his pants, right? It's fucking, it's that Vietnamese food, man. It's fucking, he's walking with a turd in his pants. Oh, damn. He's a fucking man. This is fucking, he's so presidential. Ah, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. Making his entrance. Making his entrance onto the world stage. Oh, let's just look at this guy. Damn, his uh, Kim Jong-un making his, making his appearance. These guys, right? And you don't say hello, you don't, you don't address Kim Jong-un the right way. They chop your ball, chop your head off. It's like so he's getting off his uh his train. Apparently it's a an armored train. He traveled twenty eight hundred miles in an armored train from North Korean Peninsula. <laughs> he was probably afraid that they were gonna blow him up out of the sky, right? Fucking so he took a train. He's got an armored train. There's all kinds of shit going on here. There's his whoop, there's his car. I think he's uh he's one upping Trump. Where's Trump, man? Look at these guys. He's got his soldiers around him. <laughs> got these dudes running. <laughs> they, they fucking run. They run. They're trained, man. They're trained. They're athletes. All right, so that's the... Uh, that's the show now. Let's get down to the real shit. So what is the reason? Why does North Korea cling to their nukes? Why? Let's find out. Let's find out from... Potentially our next first female president, our next president, female president, Tulsi Gabbard. This is breathtaking, man. This is a new, uh, a new piece just out by Tulsi Gabbard. See, everything, YouTube's playing games, right? See, 506 likes and only 181 views. <laughs> so the whole like, dislike, how many subscribers, how many views shit, is, is, it's off the table, man. YouTube is... YouTube picks and chooses. I have way more, way more reach than my stupid numbers say. I believe that. Right? A shadow man, right? They, they pick and choose. Right? So, so let's watch Chelsea again. So we are facing a very direct nuclear threat from North Korea. Well, I've been talking about the seriousness of this threat for years, and I've been calling on President Trump, work out the differences so that we can build a pathway towards denuclearization. There's a few things that have to happen in order for those negotiations to be successful. First of all, they have to happen without preconditions. The second issue is understanding why North Korea has developed and is holding on so tightly to these nuclear weapons because they see it as the only deterrent against the U.S. coming in and overthrowing the regime there. They see how the United States in Libya, for example, guaranteed Gaddafi, we're not going to go after you, you should get rid of your nuclear weapons. He did, then we went and led an attack that toppled Gaddafi. North Korea is now in a position where Kim Jong-un is saying, no way, I'm not going to give up these nuclear weapons because he doesn't see that credible message coming from the United States that we're not interested in overthrowing your government. We're interested in removing this nuclear threat from our country and the world. Wow. Powerful. 
Powerful. Wow, that was so powerful, right? So that's what she's saying is trust. The gist of the the message is nobody trusts us. Uh, why should they trust us? We have all these we like Libya, we have uh you know so many situations right now where we're we're lying about Venezuela, all over South America, Syria, Iraq, lie, right? Trust. That's what that's why no nobody's gonna you think the guy's just gonna lay down his arms? Hell no. So here's Trump getting his military salute from the Vietnamese people as he arrives. So let's check this out. President Trump arrived in Vietnam on Tuesday to discuss denuclearization with Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea, capping off months of threats of and weapons tests. As the men prepared to meet for the second time in eight months, their avowed goal of achieving a lasting peace and complete denuclearization remained elusive. But the once imminent threat of war felt even more removed. Fear of war gripped North Korean Peninsula in 2017 after a series of North Korean missile tests prompted Trump to threaten that country with fire and fury. Remember that? Mr. Kim responded with what appeared to be a successful test of a hydrogen bomb and launched an intercontinental ballistic missile that it said was powerful enough to reach the continental United States. After the two leaders met in June, tensions and tensions eased dramatically. The North uh, stopped testing weapons, and the United States halted military exercises with the South. But the leaders did not iron out a clear path to, nu- to denuclearization. Denuclearization is just for them. It's not for us, right? Because we're fucking, we're the shit. You have to denuclearize for the, for the, for the empire, right? Only we get to choose who we blow up. Who gets blown up is in our court, right? That's the way it works, right? Fucking come on, man. You got to give it up. You got to give up your arms, man. After meeting Kim Jong-un in Singapore, Mr. Trump said he fell in love with the North Korean leader and vowed to secure a bright future for the North should it disarm. Despite the fanfare, the meeting yielded only a vague, vaguely worded joint statement composed of four broad Agreements. Uh, who cares? Uh, where's, there's a good part. Oh, this, is, this is good. The United States and North Korea have yet to uh, agree on what complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula entails. It means, you know, you get rid of all your nukes, right? Washington wants the final, fully verifiable dismantling of all of North Korea's weapons of mass destruction, their delivery systems, fiscal materials and fissile materials and production facilities. But North Korea has indicated at times that it will not give up its nuclear deterrent until the United States removes its, quote, 28,500 troops from South Korea. 28,500 troops in South Korea? What? And keeps its long-range bombers, aircraft carriers, and other nuclear-capable military assets away from its peninsula. So, what he's saying, I mean, it, I mean, is it is it irrational for Kim Jong Un to say, "Get your fucking bomb, your bomber, your bomber boats out of our water, right? Get your twenty-eight thousand five hundred troops off our border." Right? And then maybe we'll think about it, right? Because it's a threat. Don't you see it? People feel threatened. The guy feels, the little man is feeling threatened. The little man is not so little with his big bombs, right? So what's going on here? What is this all about, right? So this is, the first, the first irony is that so North Korea is this little thing and, South, and, and the United States is this giant monster that can consume North Korea in a heartbeat, right? We could eviscerate them, erase them from existence, right? Now, it is a threat because of the allies. Our allies, South Korea, Japan, parts of China can get whacked, right? Because that's who they'll throw at first. If North Korea is going to bomb anyone, they're going to hit the ones clo- their enemies closest to them, which is Japan. Pow, Japan will sink into the ocean. 
if North Korea decided to do that. But the, 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 bigger, the bigger point of the thing is, what is Trump doing over there, right? He's going to be Mr. Macho Alpha Male. He's going he's gonna, to gonna eat dinner together, him and Kim Jong-un. They're going to go on a canoe ride in Venezuela, in, 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 in uh, fucking Vietnam. They're going to go look at the skull, the skull factory or whatever this fucking, the killing fields. That's Cambodia. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna go and they're gonna they're gonna eat dinner together. We're gonna see 20 pictures of them eating together and shaking hands. And what the fuck comes out of it, right? Because the bottom line is North Korea doesn't trust the United States, and the United States doesn't trust North Korea. And North Korea has every right to not trust the United States because of its history, because of its current actions all over the world. In every place that it 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 tries to create uh, uh, that it creates war for regime change, right? So now if, if the idea that North Korea and South Korea could someday again come together, now it's been 50, 60 years and the cultures have, or however many years, it's been so, the cultures are now so divided, like in uh, West, uh, East and West Germany, they were able to merge, you know, reunify but the idea that North Korea and South Korea could reunify, South Korea being a, vi- a vibrant, quote, democracy, whatever that means anymore, uh, unquote, and, and uh, a very much a thriving economy, Seoul, Korea, to merge with a kind of a mysterious, unknown, militant side of them that they haven't been associated with for 60 years, I don't think that is the goal of the thing, but it is something that could it could could be what what uh, Kim Jong Un is afraid of. That somehow we give up our bombs, and then United States takes those twenty eight thousand troops and sticks them up our ass, and tells us now we have to reunify with South Korea because Washington said so. So it's a tense. It's it's interest, It's an interesting, I guess, scenario to watch. And why is Trump's so, so interested and why does he love this man when he, you know, when, when the rest of the, uh, you know, and, and Maduro, what about Maduro in Venezuela? He doesn't love Maduro. Why? I don't know. It's a damn good question. It's a damn good question, but it's a good, it's a good one to follow. Marcus Conti reporting.